Great to see you here. My name is Luc de Custer. I'm founder of the Custer Academy and I welcome you to one of my new videos on YouTube. But before we start with the actual video and you're here for the first time or you didn't subscribe yet, this is the moment to click the subscribe button, subscribe to our channel, click on the bell button and every time we have a new video, YouTube will inform you. This new video will be about random numbers. Basically, it's a special way how a computer can create random numbers. And random numbers are very important in computer science. Now, basically, what is a random number? Well, a random number is a number that is generated, but we don't know what the value will be. We cannot make an estimation based on future value or sorry past values we have no idea what the next number will be and every time we select a number it will be different and it can take a very long time or should take a very long time before we have the same number again now creating random numbers is not so easy and different techniques have been used to create real random numbers a typical application how to find some random numbers is throwing a dice. A dice has values 1 to 6. All of them should have the same probability of occurrence. So when we throw with a really well equilibrated dice, we cannot know what the next number will be. We know it's between 1 and 6. We know that there is a probability of 1, 6, that it will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. But that's it. When we throw a 6, we don't know what the next number will be. Now we can expand the dice game with more dice. Of course, when we have more dice, let's say 2, we only can create random numbers between 2 and 12. But if we look at the combinations, we also see that this is a different distribution. We have a triangular distribution here where the number 7 has the highest probability of occurrence. Nevertheless, every time we throw those two dice, we will get a number which is basically not predictable. We can also add more dice, and the more dice we add, the different or the distribution will change slowly. We started with the uniform distribution for one dice. We had a triangular distribution for two dice. And we go to n dice, we will find a normal distribution. Every time we throw, the number is basically random. We don't know what's going to happen. And we cannot use the past information to determine the future. The same when you play Lotto, typically, the number that will be drawn is basically random. Now, when we look at creating real random numbers, we use physical processes. For example, the decay of a radioactive element. We can look at the um, natural processes. We can look at the bias of some, um, let's say, uh, radio transmissions. There are different elements that can be used to create real random numbers, but they're really difficult to create and we have to put that entire list into the computer. Now, there are some ways and recently I read about the creation of a real random generator on a computer. Now, when we look at computers, what we're going to do is in fact create a random generator. It's based on modular arithmetics and it has different components and when we select those components we can basically determine the number of random numbers, real random numbers that we will have. But they're not exactly real random numbers because there is a repetition in there. We call them pseudo-random numbers. But like I said, computer technology and program is evolving and people are working on the real random generator. Now we can have different generators and different generators can be used to create different outcomes. Where do we use random generators? Well, random generators are typically used when we are working on 
programs on simulations, for example, Monte Carlo simulation. But let's have a look how we can create a random numbers with a computer. Let's now look at a solution, a possible way to create pseudo-random numbers. We use what they call a linear congruential method. So basically we're going to use a linear equation AXN plus C modulus M to calculate the next random number, pseudo-random number. What are the elements that we have here? A is what we call the multiplier and the multiplier is between 2 and M. The next one we have xn. Now xn is determined by iterations and we start with x0 to find x1. And x0 is what we call the seed. C is the increment and it's also between 0 and m. Now for the example that I want to show you, I selected the seed equal to 5, the multiplier equal to 9, the modulus equal to 11 and the increment equal to 3. And now we can calculate those different elements. Now we already know that x0 is equal to 5. We know that x1 is 9 times x0 plus 3 modulus 11, which is equal to 9 times 5 plus 3 modulus 11 and this is 45, this is 48 and we can say 44 is 4 times 11 and the remainder is 4 so x1 is equal to 4. We do the same for x2 so now x2 is 9 times 4 plus 3 modulus 11 and we find 36 plus 3 is 39 39 so we have 33 3 times 11 the remainder in this case is 6 x3 is 9 times uh, sorry 6 plus 3 modulus 11 which is 54 57 so we have 55, so the remainder is 2. We have x4, which is 9 times 2 plus 3 modulus 11, which is then equal to 18 plus 3 is 21. 21, so we have 11 plus 10 is 21, so 10 is the remainder. And then we find x5, is 9 times 10 plus 3 modulus 11 is in fact 90 plus 3 is 93 93 and when we look at this we have 88 is 8 times 11 so the remainder is 5 but what do we see we come back to x0 so basically from here we have a repetition and what we have are basically five random or pseudo random number. It's clear that with this information, with this data, it is not good, it's not sufficient to create a large set of random numbers or pseudo random numbers. Now we have to find other ways. We will look into another example where we have a higher number, higher numbers where we have let's say more pseudo random numbers that we can create before we get repetition and from the modulus function we know that we will have that repetition from a certain moment. Now what is also important and it's important to talk about it's about the seed. Where does the seed come from? How do we find the seed? Now if we always use the same value for x0 what will happen is that we always will have the same series of random numbers, pseudo-random numbers to be precise. And that's not really what we want to have. Basically, we want to have, every time we create a table, that we have a new number. Now, 
How could we select X0? What parameters can you find in the computer that would help us to find X0? Let's have a look at some possibilities. We have the clock. We have a clock in the computer which is changing all the time. We can predict what is the number, but we cannot predict exactly what will be the value of that clock once we start with the creation of the table. So once we have the number of the clock, it's in fact a starting number. It will be different every time we start. So we have a better estimation of x0. Now, another thing that we can look at, and it was a good idea from one of my students, would be the RAM value. When we're using the computer, there is a free RAM. That free RAM depends on parameters like programs running, uh, websites open, all kinds of things that are happening with the computer. And we don't really know how to estimate that at any moment. It can be basically, in a way, random. So we can use this value, the remaining RAM memory, to define the seed. Another element could also be the ROM, and we could find other parameters that may change during the natural evolution of the computer. So when things are changing, it doesn't really matter. We have a starting value that will be every time when we restart the procedure to create a pseudo-random table, we will have a different table, a basically a different order of the random numbers. Because the random numbers, once we start working, we will get the same random numbers. They will always be uh, between 0 and modulus m or m minus 1. That's always the case. Now let's have a look when we have an example where we have more repetitive numbers, where we have a larger table that is created automatically. Let's now do another exercise where I have different numbers and we will see that we have a lot more possibilities and we create more random numbers or pseudo random numbers. I looked at m at the divisor at 1235. The multiplicator is 15. c is 13 and I have a seed x0 of 3575. And we will see that it's basically not important to take a seat which is so high, but let's show that with the first calculation. So when I say x1 is then equal to a times 15 times x0, which is 3575, plus, and I have to add plus, 13 modulus 1235. When we do the calculation, and I did it for you, we find that the result is 533. So basically what happens, even when we have a very large number here, we always go back to modulus m. We will always end up with a number between 0 and 1235 not included. So basically, if we have a larger number, it doesn't matter. After the first calculation, we come to a different number. We continue, and I made a small uh, spreadsheet for this, just saying a times x0 plus c modulus 1000 235 using the mod function in Excel, mod which gives you the number, mod, number, and m. And it gives you automatically this result, so you can create this table very quickly. Now we do the same thing for x2, 15 times 533 plus 13, modulus, 1235, which gives us a number 598. And we can continue here. 
And when we continue, we will see that when we arrive at x19, we find basically that we have x1 again. And we find 533. So it means with this solution that we find 19, or sorry, 18 different numbers. pseudo-random numbers, if we would have selected x0 in a different value smaller than 1235, we could include it, but basically it's not really a random number. Right? We just selected it, so we have to be careful there. So basically we see when we increase m, we see that automatically we get higher or a more pseudo-random numbers that we can use. Now, what do people do in practice? What is the practical approach? In a practical approach, m is typically set at 2 to the power 31 minus 1. So it's a very large number. Typically for a, we select 7 to the power 5. And we can also select c. Now, in case c is equal to 0, we would refer to the linear congruential method as basically a pure multiplicative random generator, because c is equal to 0, and we only have the multiplication part, so our equation becomes axn modulus m to get you xn plus 1. Now, when we look at this, it's possible to prove that we find 2 to the 31st power minus 2 random numbers. And that will give us typically a sufficient amount to apply to our different problem, uh, problems where we really need random numbers. Of course, we can go to higher numbers. There are different procedures that exist that can be used. But in this part of the video, we just talk about this type of random generator or pseudo-random generator. So we get a large list of pseudo-random numbers. And like I said at the beginning of the video, there are some people working on creating a real, uh, let's say, real random numbers using a computer, creating a special generator that would guarantee real random numbers. Now that was it for this video. Don't forget to look at the text below the video. You find links to our courses. You find coupons that you can use to buy the courses with a great discount. And of course, we're at the end of this video. If you didn't subscribe yet, this is the moment to click the subscribe button, click the bell button, and every time we have a new video, we will tell you. YouTube will send you a message. Thank you very much, and I'm looking forward to see you, seeing you again. Bye-bye.